gaming IEMs. Can those two words be in the same sentence? I think so. Audio and gaming is a subjective experience. One may perform more of an environmental experience where a gamer feels as though they're in the game, living amongst NPCs. Other gamers may want more of a precise tactical experience, one that allows the gamer to have the advantage over other players. This, in my opinion, is the difference between headphones and IEMs. My name is Shadeless, and I'm on the hunt to find the best IEM for gaming. Today we are looking at four IEMs with different strengths and weaknesses. Some of the IEMs today are presented with really good highs, some lack bass or sub bass, some outclass others in soundstage, but overall, there is one that took the crown. Let me know which one you think I chose before you continue this video. Comment below. Starting off our list today is the Awful Performer 5. Despite its name, the Awful Performer 5 came out strong in this race. With one powerful dynamic driver for the low end and four high performance balanced armature drivers, two for mids and two for highs, based off the goods inside, one could say that this masterpiece is great for gaming. The Performer 5 comes with a hard case, a beautiful and comfortable cable, and plenty of ear tips. The outer shell is made out of high quality 3D printed materials. Speckled with orange, red, pink, and more, it gives off a fiery feel. The cable is comfortable, and I like that it comes with a neck cringe. The nozzles on the unit are a bit small for my ears and lack the length needed. I found it hard to create a nice, solid seal. This could maybe be fixed with different tips, but this was a negative in my book. So overall, what did I like about the awful Performer 5s? Number one, the bass was exciting. It gave that cinematic feel, that really big boom. And I really enjoyed that when explosions or grenades were set off. Number two, the highs were detailed. Footsteps were easy to detect while playing Escape from Tarkov, and just the crunchiness of the snow and the grass was really enjoyable. And lastly, number three, the look and feel of these IEMs just screams high quality. I really enjoyed that. Here's what I didn't like about the awful Performer 5s. Number one, I couldn't create a good seal with the Performer 5s. I typically wear medium tips because the large ones cause fatigue in my ear canal. When using larger tips, I was able to create somewhat of a seal, but ran into the comfort issue. I think the reason I had this issue was due to the length of the nozzles. If they were longer, I could have created a better seal. By not having that good seal, I feel like there was lack in regards to sound quality. There just wasn't enough, if you know what I mean. Number two, although music was awesome to listen to on this IEM, I just didn't enjoy it while gaming. Attempting to locate audio cues or other players directionally was hard to do. I couldn't tell if someone was right above me or below me or right to the side. And regarding the distance of whether a player was close to me or far away from me, I couldn't tell. It was all mushy. Lastly, number three, overall, it just lacked in clarity. Everything felt like it was thrown into a blender and blended up into one big mush of audio. It just wasn't an enjoyable experience. Next up is the Kiwi Ears Orchestra Light. Eight balanced amateurs of smooth technical listening. That, my friend, is the Kiwi Ears Orchestra Light. The Kiwi ears come with a hard slash soft case, a pretty nice cable, and multiple ear tips. Regarding the outer shell, we're presented with another beautiful three printed acrylic resin housing. I really enjoy that you can literally see the insides. It reminds me of the Game Boy Color back in the days. The cable feels great over the ears, it feels like quality, and it also comes with a neck cinch. Unfortunately, like the Performer 5s, the nozzles are short in length. This contributes to a poor seal and affects the sound signature. Again, this could possibly be fixed with different ear tips. Possibly. So what did I like about the Kiwi Ears Orchestra Light? Number one, I like the look of it. You can't beat the beauty in this IEM. You can literally see each of the BAs. It looks phenomenal and it just gives off that classic look. There's nothing like seeing what you're working with. Number two, the Kiwi Ears allowed you to be able to feel as though you're in the environment. It really did a great job at soundstage and making the environment larger than expected. Number three, 
three, the way that it handled imaging and detailed sound signature was awesome. I was able to pinpoint where enemies were. I was able to separate differing sounds and pick them apart essentially. This IEM did not have a blender experience. Overall, I would say that this IEM was well balanced. Here's what I didn't like about the Kiwi ears. Number one, the short nozzle. I don't know if there is just a plethora of people that have short, narrow ear canals, but man, the lacking of length in the nozzles drives me nuts because this IEM has so much potential. Would this be fixed with different ear tips? Possibly, but I didn't have any extra ones at the time. This was my only real complaint about the Kiwi Ears Orchestra lights because essentially if you don't have a good seal, it affects the sound. You don't get to experience those wonderful highs, beautiful mids, low sub bass and bass. You don't get that experience. And to me, that was just really disappointing. Critical Zero Red. The Dual Dynamic Driver Demon, that's what I like to call it, with its, quote, dual polyurethane suspension composite liquid crystal dome diaphragm, this beautiful red IEM is out for a fight and is vicious. If you're into those lovely highs, very detailed, punchy, crispiness, this IEM is for you, my friend. This IEM comes with an okay cable, some ear tips, an attachment to kind of boost up the low end, and a flimsy faux leather case. There's something about that deep cherry red that I really enjoy. I like the nozzles, the nozzles are long, but I would say that some might find them uncomfortable. But let's break this down. What did I like about the Critical Zero Reds? Number one, I enjoyed the nozzles. Although the nozzles got a little bit tiresome after a while, they created an excellent seal. With the proper seal, I was able to take advantage of the balanced sound signatures that it provided. Number two, I enjoyed the crispiness, the crunch of the snow, the crunch of the gravel, all those details were noticeable and present. Although lacking in the bass, when pairing with the accessory that came with it to boost the bass, it does the job. And three, I just like the look overall. Nothing beats that beautiful cherry red tied in with a deep dark midnight black. So what didn't I like about this pair? Number one, it just lacked. It didn't really give me the fullness that I was looking for or the excitement. If you're into flat, and some would say balanced, this is probably gonna be more so for you. But for me, it was just a little bit distasteful. Number two, imaging wise, I just really couldn't tell where players were. It was sometimes a little bit confusing to me and you kind of got some of that blender effect. This also ties into some of the issues with verticality. I didn't really know if someone was above me, below me. Everything just kind of sounded like it was right in front of me. Overall, for around $55, I think there are better products out there. The Critical Zero Blues. Like its younger brother, the Critical Reds, this beautiful blueberry set comes with dual dynamic drivers as well. The Critical Blues give off that ocean feel. These are almost identical to the Reds with the larger nozzles, the contrast between black and a different color. But what's different is what happens on the insides. With this unit, you get a basic cable, some ear tips, and a faux leather case. So what did I enjoy about the Critical Zero Blues? Number one, I have to give it to the seal. With the larger nozzles, it created a wonderful seal to block out any outside noise. With this seal, I was able to enjoy the deep lows, the nice highs, and even the mid-range. Number two, I enjoyed the imaging and sound stage. When it comes to directional audio, man, I could really tell where someone was and I could also tell their distance. Verticality-wise, if someone was above me, I knew it. And if someone was below me, I knew that as well. The environment effect was there, but I was able to cut through the environment and hear the necessary noises alerting me to any incoming enemies. Furthermore, despite it being balanced, it still gave me that punch and excitement that I was looking for. And three, 
they're comfortable. The larger nozzles do get tiresome after a little bit, but overall, when you get used to it, it didn't really bother me that much, and I was able to wear them for a four to five hour gaming session. What didn't I like about the Critical Zero Blues? The only thing I didn't really like about these was the cable. I found that the cable would get tangled very easy, and this can be resolved by simply replacing it. But if you're in the market to just spend around 50 bucks, who wants to replace a cable? I don't. Overall, for 50 bucks, you can't beat this product. This IEM can easily outperform many two to $300 IEMs, which is nuts. So out of these four, which one did I pick? Well, my choice is based off of price, performance, and comfortability. And surprisingly, the winner is the Critical Zero Blues. The Critical Zero Blues are $50, and they outperformed all of the other IEMs. When it comes to playing Tarkov or any other competitive shooter, it's important to know exactly where your enemy is. And these beautiful puppies did the job. Now, are these like the end-all be-all? No. I I'm sure that there are a better performing pair of IEMs out there, but I don't know. This is what I know now, and this is going to be my daily driver moving forward. Again, for $50? I can't believe that this outperformed the other ones. But like I said at the beginning of the video, this is all subjective. Your ears might not like these, and you're just going to have to test these out for yourself. We will continue our hunt, if the budget allows, to find the best IEM for gaming. But as for now, these little blueberries IEMs for 50 bucks? These are the winners for now. Hit that subscribe button, turn on that notification bell, that way you can be notified for future upcoming videos. My name is Shadeless, God bless.